Did I just find my new favorite pocket knife design in the Hogue EX? Dash zero one. Well, hey folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. I am your host, Aaron. Super pumped today for this particular video because we're looking at Hogue pocket knives. Never reviewed a Hogue pocket knife here before. We've only done one fixed blade from them before. Was really impressed with that. I've had my eye on this design for over two years and I finally went out and purchased both of these. The three and a half inch version, the four inch version, and there's also an auto version. So Hogue has three different designs out there to choose from, three different sizes and functions and features. And so we're gonna look at these blades today because I am in love. I am totally digging what these have to offer. I was kind of ho-hum when I was originally just looking at them like, yeah, it's cool. Maybe I'll get around to reviewing those. And finally, there was a, a discount that I saw on Amazon. I picked one up. I got the four incher first. I was like, oh my gosh, I, what have I been missing? I am a doofus for not having waited so long. So I went and picked up the three and a half, have messed around now with the auto as well so that we can discuss and show you what the EX-03 has to offer and the awesome features, the fun factor, the functionality and performance for the price and see today for you if possibly this design would be perfect for your needs as well. So let's go ahead guys, jump to it and see what these blades have to offer. All right, let's go ahead and hit blade performance on these two guys. Now the nice thing is that nothing really changes except for actual length of the knives and this will be the exact same on the auto as well. What we're looking at on the four inch version up here, four inches from handle to tip, actual cutting edge 3.875 with a thickness of 0.15. So pretty stout back there, but coming into a nice, strong, sturdy tip. Then on the three and a half inch version, three and a half inches overall, 3.375 actual cutting edge and the exact same thickness at 0.15. We have broad, flat grinds. I like the blade. You know, it's really, it's like this big, wide, you know, um, broad blade. Very um, tactical feeling but you can still get a lot of EDC tasks done, even though it is a little bit on the thick side and it does have that high saber grind. You can see there it goes about three fourths of the way up the blade on both of these knives, which is a good thing. So it's gonna be really good with a lot of tasks, but still giving you a lot of strength as well, which is a big bonus. Then you have that really nice swedge on both of these guys, giving you that good precision on the tip, really good belly. Just a nice classic, like clipped out draw point, basically. You know, it's not a clip point and it's not really a drop point either. They've really done well. The aesthetics on the knife, you gotta have aesthetics. You know, if it, if it looks like it fell off the ugly tree and got run over by a semi, I might not carry it. It might be functional, but it might not be super, you know, enjoyable to carry. This thing looks good and is functional on the more heavy duty side of things. This is designed to be a little bit more heavy duty, not a scalpel, not, you know, a Spyderco Delica with a full flat grind that's 0.1 inches thick. If you need that and that's what you're looking for, these are not the knives for you. But if you're looking for a little bit more heavy duty, but still being able to do everything you would want in your, you know, daily living for EDC carry, it absolutely will do that. They have um, some Tanto designs as well out there. I'm not sure about serrated. I'll double check and I'll try and annotate a photo in if I can, if they do offer serrations. Um, I, to my knowledge, I think I only saw plain edges on their autos as well as their manuals here that we're looking at today. Now it's made uh, in the US out of 154 CM steel. Great steel, it's not a super steel in this day and age, but it is definitely for the price that they're asking that we'll talk about in a little bit. It's definitely on par. They rock weld it 57 to 59, which I think is actually really good. Again, being more of that utility blade. So you don't want it like ultra hard so that yeah, it holds an edge forever, but it's kind of brittle. This thing, it's a little bit lower on the rock well so that it can handle harder tasks without it, you as worried about chipping and snapping with this design as maybe some other blades that are out there that just have 154 cm that are maybe like 59 to 60 or 58 to 60 you know something like that so they've kind of brought it down a little bit also makes it a little easier to resharpen in the field which is a big plus so uh these are the satin finish blades they from what i can tell unless you go like super high end and get like their 200 g10 like sig brand or like sig you know collaboration you can't get like black on black i'd love to see that i think i've seen some autos like that but their manuals i don't see any black on black you have to get like black blade 
tan handles or something like that. So that's a little bit of a downer. I'd love to see some more color combinations in the future. Have them play around with it. Hogue's known for playing around with the color combinations and stuff. Um, so that would be pretty sweet to see. But, you know, the satin is great. And the performance on the blades for more hard, heavy-duty, do-everything tasks is phenomenal. All right, we're going to go ahead and hit uh, lock up and deployment. You can just see there, centering is perfect on both of these blades. Very, very nice. Right down the center there. Good detent. You know, it's not going to wobble out unless you really give it a good jerk. Then it will flap, flip open. Obviously a little easier on the heavier 4-inch model. Uh, and then we have this awesome uh, push button, you know, plunge lock. Again, going originally probably to that auto, I would assume, was made first. And then they make these manual ones afterwards. You can just see very nicely done, very large. Right there. Let's see if we can get it focused in. Right there. Easily disengage. And then that blade just wants to fall right back in. Just a little jerk. So it reminds me a lot of like an axis lock speed, which is really fun. So I can hit it, open it, depress it, and then without even touching the blade, swing it back in. I really like that. It's a ton of fun to play with. Just like if you ever have owned a Benchmade axis lock, very fun, or a Spyderco compression lock. Very similar in that regard. Love that. So the lockup is really nice. Very large stop bar you're going to get on both of these blades. So that's very nice as well and solid, solid lockup. Zero rock side to side, none up and down. You're gonna get that on both of these designs there. Now, the safety feature again, originally for that auto, uh, it does nothing in the closed position. You cannot move it. It just kind of like half moves, but it doesn't lock the blade out or anything. Um, you open it, you slide it forward, you can't depress the button. So that is a nice feature. You won't accidentally you know, depress it. For again, more of that law enforcement, military use. By no means doesn't make it a fixed blade, but then you just slip it back. And they really did a good job of making it easy to purchase, but that they're not these giant like buttons that you could easily engage by mistake. I mean, you have to think about each one. You can see there the button, and this is gonna be on both the four and the three and a half, and the auto, all the same. Makes it very easy to depress and move but it's not like too big or too small. I don't know, they just did a really sweet, perfect, perfect job of doing that. Nice little tooling marks there on the pivot. Good, strong, thick, large pivot. You can see that nice hook in right there as well that's gonna capture the stop bar when we swing it back. Or excuse me, not the stop bar, but the locking mechanism. It captures the locking mechanism right there. So super solid lockup. I love it a lot. The auto has a really good um, action to it and the mechanism is exactly the same just no spring in it um, and for the manual versions those thumb studs just work perfectly they've really milled that out really nicely and without even flicking my wrist that thing's gonna fly open so I'm very very happy with the lockup deployment thumb studs actuation and when the, the auto that I did play with had a really good snappy action to it very similar to like the launch series the Gerber um, propel and the Gerber uh, and power and their 06 so it's a very good um, right there in the market auto as well if you're looking at the auto version all right, so we're gonna take a brief time out here to talk about price on these designs. Now, I picked each of these manual satin finish versions up for about $110, $105, $110. Those are screaming deals for the USA made locking mechanism and the 154 cm and everything that we're getting fantastic love it and that's a great price point now if you go with different color combinations you go with different sizes depends on who what when where why uh they can go to about 150 it just depends on where you're looking what the blade shapes they have that's tantos designs different color combinations whatever the auto is going to be about 180 so if you like these designs but you want an auto feature you are going to pay definitely significantly more for that auto feature that's just something to consider now we're going to again have links in the description below over to blade hq and amazon when you guys use those hyperlinks helps me buy gear right here i mean i dropped like 220 dollars to do this video for us so that i could give you guys this content that money came because you guys use the amazon and blade hq hyperlinks and watch this channel so thank you so much for your continued support in that way but for what i paid for these two manual ones awesome and for the auto for everything you're getting it's definitely right there with other autos that are usa made in this similar design and price point 
Hey guys, just wanted to give you a really quick heads up about the new affiliate program that we have with Knock Around Sunglass Company. They make male, female, children's. Uh, they have a custom shop that you can build your own sunglasses. They have UV protection, 400 pole, uh, V protection. They have polarized options and they all come in at under $50. I purchased a couple pairs a few months ago, loved them so much that we were able to land an affiliate program with them. So now if you're in the market for inexpensive, fun sunglasses, this is, I believe, a great option. I never like telling you guys stuff that I wouldn't personally use and I personally use them. My family's starting to use them and we love knock around. So if you're in the market for those cheap sunglasses that I believe give you a lot of performance for the value, check them out. Links below. We'll get that small kickback and team to do what we do here and keep fueling the channel. So thank you guys for your support with the Amazon Blade HQ and now knock around sunglass affiliate links below. All right, let's go ahead and hit the handle. Now there's a lot, Hogue is doing a lot of options. So this is again, the basic model. There are ones out there, I believe with, you know, G10 and aluminum and they got a lot. I mean, I can't even keep track of how many options there are. So hunt around on the links that we offer to you again, Amazon or Blade HQ. So you, you can get a good feel for what's out there. These again are the lightweight glass reinforced nylon version. So this is the three and a half inch blade. I'll give you those specs here first on the handle. Again, glass reinforced nylon. And this guy is going to be four 4.1 inches or ounces overall weight. 4.1 ounces. So for the size and the beefiness and kind of the, the style, I love that weight. And it's going to be 4.75 inches overall length of the handle. Now it's going to be a little fatter near the pivot and everything kind of tapers down a little bit. Contours very, ni very nicely in my large size hands though really dig it a lot. And what I really like about it is that it's slim at, I believe it's 0 0.4, 0 0.45. Uh, it's slim, but lightweight. So it just fits in my pocket really well and then fits in my hand really well. Now again, tapering down, so a little thinner near the back. So some people who like really beefy fat um, handles maybe won't dig it quite as much, but it doesn't feel square or clunky or blocky like a lot of quote unquote tactical knives. And again, they're, I think they're hitting a great blend of tactical and practical, uh, tactical and you know EDC friendly. All all the angles are nice and machined. No real issues there. Uh, right in here, the edge is slightly sharp. It's not something that's ever cut me or caused any sort of problems, but it, like if I push and I rub really hard, you know, it, it just kind of leaves a little bit of pain there, but nothing that, you know, would uh, unfinished or anything. It's just kind of an abrupt ch transition from the um, milling into the interior of the handle. No liners to speak of, except for around the pivot area. So all this is all you know reinforced and strong. And then the back portion back here is just hollow with some of that flow through in there. Really deep cutout, so I'm totally locked into place. A Little bit of mild jimping here, and then some blockier jimping on the blade itself. So I've got some really good lockup then I can even choke up if I need to, to do finer cutting tasks. And I'm totally not on the blade at all. I got a really good shelf right there on that Ricasso to control the blade, do more manipulation if I need to, that type of thing. Reverse grips feel great, fits perfectly in there. And then they even give you kind of a well right there to put your thumb. So you're totally locked into place. So I really dig it. It's a great ergonomic handle. When you're back here, you're about an inch away from the cutting edge but then you can choke up if need be. And yeah, it's not like, you know, that Spyderco Delica or, you know, mini griptilian or something like that. That's really EDC precision, but you can still get a lot of precise cuts done. And they've got done a really good job with traction and just ergonomics and really thought through, I believe the design of the knife. Then on the uh, four inch version, you're looking at uh, 4.875, so a little bit longer, and then you're looking at 4.8 ounces. So you're looking at uh, about you know 7.7 7 ounces, a little more than half an ounce heavier, so not very noticeable for the larger blade. But you are gonna get a little more real estate, it's gonna be a little bit beefier. If you were to ask me personally which handle ergonomics I prefer, if, you, if um, blade length is not an issue to you legally or whatever, then I would go with the, the full size if you have larger hands. The, the four inch version will fill out your hand just a little bit more, give you just a little bit more real estate on that back end there than on the three and a half inch version. Not that you know you're losing anything and that you still got you know full purchase, but just has a little bit extra. And with this type of knife, I like a little bit more you know handle to play with if the opportunity presents itself. Again, not that three and a half is bad at all, it's great, but you get even a little bit more to play with and a little bit more to work with with this full size for only about half an ounce more of weight and only 
less than a quarter inch overall in actual blade or uh, handle length. You will see that it's a little bit fatter overall. So it is just, I mean, it's a bigger knife. It's gonna take up more real estate, but not by much. All right, we'll hit pocket clips here. Exact same, this kind of duck bill, you know, platypus style to them. Uh, they are satin, so they're a little flashy. They're a little out there. I think there are versions that you can get black or you can even purchase aftermarket ones. Um, I don't know if they'll send them to you or not. I did see, I believe, some on Amazon that you could get blacked out versions if you wish. Tip up, tip down, righties only. Nothing for lefties. Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't really see why there isn't a reason to at least put one over here on this side, but they don't offer that right now. Maybe in the future they'll you know change that out. Uh, very functional, loops over, extremely ergonomic, no hot spot with that pocket clip that's a major plus for me i really like that and uh, not a ton sticking up you know you maybe have three quarters of an inch lanyard hole sticking up right above that and then um, you kind of got that glass breaker that we've been talking about a little bit so definitely enough for like more again law enforcement tactical um, military use if you want to do that you can absolutely grab it and there's enough sticking out but it's not like overly obnoxious and it's like you know two inches sticking out of your pocket like some tactical blades are so it's kind of a, a good blend that you could EDC it but you're still getting quick access to the knife if you need it for more of that law enforcement military idea well guys gotta say this is absolutely one of my new favorite designs and Hogue has completely outdone themselves I'm gonna have to look into some more of their designs. I just love the functionality, particularly in these manuals. The auto is great as well. I will eventually get my hands on one of those. The locking mechanism, the handle ergonomics, the weight class, the performance, the price point, all ultra connect with me. And I love this design from Hogue. And I'm gonna have to try out more stuff from them in the near future because I'm so in love with these. And I, man, I'm just, I can't believe I've been missing out on these sick, sick blades. So uh, guys, thank you so much for coming over here today. I hope this video has helped you out, show you what the EX-03 design has to offer and whether or not it's gonna be a really good folder for you as well. Uh, check us out on all the relevant social media, Instagram, Facebook. If you're not a current follower over there, it's a great way to see what's up in common projects I'm working on. If you're not a current subscriber, I invite you to become part of the GT family, throwing up stuff like this every single week. If you want to get involved in the mailbag, that's where we answer some of your guys' questions that you guys put in the comments below live on an upcoming video. Just in the comments below, put hashtag mailbag and ask your question. And if it stands out to me, I might give you a shout out and answer your question in an upcoming video. So that's a fun thing that we've been recently starting. And guys, finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.